Hey folks. So uh, I got a question uh, earlier today about how to deal with a quick set smart key cylinder where something has gone wrong and you don't have a working key for it. Uh, first step obviously is going to be getting it out of the door and exactly how you do that I'm going to leave that up to uh, you to sort out uh, because that will involve getting into your house, apartment, office, or whatever it is that you have secured with that smart key cylinder. Uh, after that, you simply unmount it from the door, uh, pull the retaining clip off the cylinder, and drop it out the front. At this point, we have the actual smart key cylinder in front of us, and first step here is going to be just like dismantling pretty much any other lock, which is you have to get this uh, E-clip off the back. Uh, so I'm going to try to do this with a minimum of special tools. Uh, you can do this with a flat bladed screwdriver or any number of other things. I just happen to have this uh, key gauge sitting around. Once you have it popped up like this, just pull it off a little bit more and you can get the tailpiece off. Once that's out of the way, just keep pushing that up and eventually it will pop off. There's also going to be this little spacer ring. Take that off, set it aside. Uh, now we're still meeting some resistance here. And what's happening is if we look in these little holes, you can actually see the uh, sliders or the wafers that interact with the sidebar through those holes. And right now they are sticking out of the uh, inner plug right here and stopping this from moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Gently poke them a bit. And so we've got one sticking down. Now, if you have a quick set key that is cut to uh, all depths lower than three, this goes a little bit faster. And you know what, let's just give that a try. Here's my number three depth key. I'm gonna put that in there. And while it won't exactly turn, it will let us pull that housing off. So there's the body of the cylinder off. And now we're going to carefully take that key out. This right here is the sidebar. We're going to carefully set that aside. Don't want to lose that. And remember where that notch went. It goes closer to the front. Uh, you've got two small springs in here, one small spring in the back. And then right here, we have all of the uh, wafers. So we're going to very, very carefully separate the two sides of the plug, making sure that we don't drop any of those wafers. This stuff uh, on this side, as long as you don't remove this plastic cover, which you don't need to do, this side of things will pretty much stay put. So now that we've got these two sides apart, we're going to again carefully line all of these wafers up. Actually, let me uh, get one out. So this is what the come on, smart key wafer looks like. Uh, in the older, in the very first versions, these were made of either come on, uh, like zinc or plastic. Uh, now they are, in this version, made from some sort of ferrous metal because they are magnetic. Uh, so. This little gap here is what the sidebar fits into. This little sawtoothed thing 
is what uh, engages with the feelers in the other half of the plug to uh, set each of these wafers to a particular cut depth. And then this big round notch near the end here is uh, used to hold them in place when we are resetting the combination. That's going to be important. So what we're going to do now is put this back. We're going to take this and very, very carefully, we're going to push each of these wafers until that round cutout lines up with this round channel in the side of the, in this half of, of the plug. Just like that. All lined up. And now we're going to get the key that we want programmed to this lock ready. Put that in. Now you can see all of those feelers are at different heights corresponding to the cuts on the key. And very carefully. Uh, it's okay, we didn't drop anything and we just shifted one of those wafers a little bit, so we're all right. So what we want to do now is very carefully, we're going to put this little spring into this channel, like that. Compress that spring carefully. And slide those two halves together, like that. And then when they snap together, we're going to let that release. And all of these wafers should look like they're all lined up at the same distance from the edge of the plug. So on this side, all the same, and on this side, all the same. You don't need to be all the same on this side as on this side, just as long as each side is identical in each position. Now, we're going to put our sidebar back in, and we are going to put this back into the body. Now you'll notice there are three cutouts here. The middle one is what we want to put the sidebar into, and just ease it in, and then turn the lock, turn the key in the lock a couple of times. And then when we get back to the lock position, we're going to take that out and it should now stay locked. So at this point, we're going to carefully reassemble this. Not forgetting to put our tailpiece back in the right way. And if we put this back into the housing and put the retaining clip back on. Let's make sure that our key works properly. And since we have extra keys lying around, let's try this depth key and see if it will operate the lock. No, it will not. Good. This lock is now programmed to this key and you can then go about reassembling everything, putting it back on your door, and you should now have your lock back in action uh, without having to go out and buy a whole new lock or go and replace all of your keys. So until next time, folks, have fun and happy picking.